trying to prepare you for the death. And so you must live a life of understanding that you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. This problem is so enormous that once I have played some scenarios in my head, if God, I mean, it's no news that the Nigerian leadership in all uh, level is, is, is ridden with crisis of legitimacy. And something had occurred to me once. If they come to the church today in Nigeria, I said, give us a leader who will be the president of this country. Who qualify? Who qualify? But I can hear some people say, look, the Lord will use me. Say, how? What's your preparation? But when the anointing of God will fall upon me, <laughs> then I get it. The son of Tony Blair right now, Pastor, is working in some very obscure location, serving as a community officer. He can get any job any year. They serve somewhere in the community, doing community service to prepare himself for leadership. When the black people are very ad hoc, we live from crisis to crisis. We don't live by design. We are throw preparation away. And we believe that the anointing will fall on me when the time comes. And God is saying, no, take your teachers. I will do my part. I will do my part. But take your teachers. Dig your ditches. But something interesting in this story, brethren. The Bible says, as soon as they heard this word, and the Bible says in verse 20, they decided to offer a grain offering. There is a connection between what you offer to God in the place of sacrifice and the intervention you can provoke from heaven. When you have done your preparation to provoke divine intervention, release a sacrifice to heaven and watch God do something. The Bible says when they gave God a great offering, and the Bible says suddenly the waters came out and feed the ditches. When you have prepared and you seal it up with the seed of sacrifice, God by nature cannot resist sacrifice. Oh. Wherever God will find sacrifice, he gravitates in that direction. And the Bible says the moment they gave that sacrifice, what happened? Water feed the ditches. They trust it in about the water. God told them through Elisha. He said, the water that you will receive. He said, God will give you the water, but he will also deliver the Moabites into your hands. I found out that when your preparation is robust, you get more than you bargain for. <laughs> they, wanted, they, they wanted water. That was what took them to Elisha. But... Elisha, our God, was also saying the water wasn't an end in itself. It was a means to an end. What you actually wanted is the victory over Moab. I will give you water. But it's a trusting man of God that the water they got, which they wanted in order to be sustained by, by it, it was not their strength that gave them victory. In the equation, or in the, same, in the story we just read, the water was important. And guess how God used the water? Everybody says his ways are not our ways. And some people are sleeping. And what happened last night? But listen to me. The Bible says the water feed the vines, feed the ditches. But guess what? The sun rose up from the east as usual. 
when a man is prepared and he has given an offering to commit heaven, this is what God does for such a man. Natural phenomena will work together for your field. Yeah. How, Pastor Fred? The Bible says the sun rose up in the morning as usual from east to where? West. To the west. As the sun rose, the Moabites, they saw the sun. And the sun did shine on the water. And guess what happened? I can understand that chemistry. I can understand that science. How the reflection of the sun will turn colorless water into blood. And the Bible says more and the entire army. They saw blood. Israel saw water as, a, as something to drink and obtain strength. I am so excited because I know that the enemies, my competitors and I, can never see the same thing. Amen. You didn't get that. Amen. Because what? What God has designed for my freedom, what God has packaged for my deliverance, cannot deliver the same meaning to me and my enemy. Amen. To them, it will be rumors of war. Amen. To me, it is a source of salvation. Amen. The Bible says they saw the water. The sun was shining on the water. For them, it was blood. But for Israel, it was life. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved of God, the reason why many of us struggle is because we don't know God. If you know God, and you have learned the art of placing Him in your closet, and doing your bits in the place of digging your ditches, and you have learned how to commit heaven with a seed, guess what happens? The things He releases into your life, that, you, that normally should give you strength, that you will get strength from, your enemies will see the same thing and it will make a different meaning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So brethren, what preparation do we need to put in place? Very quickly. The first preparation is what I call your spiritual preparation. I found out that whether in the time past or even today, battles are not won on the ground. Battles are won from the space, from the air. One of the things that makes this nation one of the most powerful nations in the world in terms of military might is because of the capacity of this nation to launch missiles and attacks from the air without the commitment of a human soul. The United States can launch any missile from any part of the world to hit its target. I just woke up this morning, I saw that, oh, some, there has been some airstrikes in, the, in, in Iraq. And guess what? Why is that important? I found out that when a man is grounded, he's limited. I found out that the easiest way for a man to obtain victory is to operate like the spirit that you are. What is the level of preparation required of you, brethren? You must train up your son. You must pray the Holy Ghost. You must ensure that there's nothing standing between you and heaven. You must make sure as far as consecration is concerned that you receive divine signals as constantly as possible. You must make sure that sin is not blocking your access. Because when a man's access to heaven is blocked by sin, the enemy will pick him up like a weakling. My prayer to God is that whenever heaven will look at you, you will be prepared for your lesson. Yes. I found out that for every position a man gets to, there is a level of spiritual preparedness expected of you. 
If this pastor had not been prepared for this level, many of you would have run out of business. Is it the number of calls? Is it the pressure? Is it the test of his temperament? Every level you get to, there is a required level of preparation that God wants you to have. Because brethren, it's only Christians that ask God for promotion and ask God for positions that they have not been prepared for. And God says, no. Many of you have brought shame to me because of your lack of preparation. There was a time we had a governor in Nigeria who was even a minister before he became governor. Unfortunately, ended up terribly as one of those that were impeached for corruption. Those of you who are familiar with the history of that country, you know what I'm talking about. And so God is not desiring we want Christian leadership. Many of us will say that part of the world. But guess what? Who will God commit that nation to his hands that has been prepared? Let me tell you on a lighter note. What happens when a man is not prepared? When you are not prepared for certain offices, your weakness will be exposed. Is that correct? Yes. If you're not prepared, you may face some live cameras. I said, Prisper, <laughs> now that you are that girl, <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when I watch that video, <laughs> as much as I wanted to be critical about that woman, I was also very sympathetic, but at the same time, I also didn't think she has done well for herself. If there was anybody who ought to have been prepared for that office, Pastor, she is the one. She was the wife of the assistant chairman, local government chairman. She acted as the wife of the local government chairman. She acted as the wife of deputy governor. She acted as the wife of the governor. She acted as the wife of vice president. She acted as the wife of acting president. And now the wife of the president. Excuse me, sir. Do you need eternity? <laughs> to me that many of us asking God for promotion. You better be careful so that your terrible witness that God is covering now will be exposed. It's so easy to sit at the back and criticize. But the moment you step on the stage, it's a different body. And so the truth is Many of us are spiritually vulnerable for our present position. And so when we are saying, God, take me to the next level, and God looks around you, he sees vulnerability. So if I take you to the next level, that secretary will mess up your glory. And God said, no. He said, that church is not anointed. You blame it on the pastor. When you bring the truth, you have your spiritual vulnerable. God, give me that breakthrough! And God looks at your life. That breakthrough, knowing every breakthrough attracts two things. It attracts likability and it attracts envy. <laughs> if all of a sudden, you have a lucky break, you used to be a two hundred thousand dollar income earner, and all of a sudden you're talking of five million income earner. Come on, brother, even your steps will change. <laughs> <laughs> when others are giving their tithes, you don't come at that time. <laughs> hey. 
Especially when the pastor have recognized you are faithful. Let's assume you are. <laughs> when others have given their small, small tithes, it's time for you to come out. God, you know it is you. It is it. We are the one you are using to support this work. Yeah? <laughs> to give you all the glory. Your steps will change. Your swabs will change. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you are not careful, you can look at your wife. Say, I'm married high in the day of poverty. I'm trying to brush her up, but she's refusing to. I think I need a new wife that is commensurate with my new status. So God, in His mercy, who will not want you to be destroyed, looks at your spiritual. God bless you, man. Say, no. If I give this breakthrough to her, to him, he can go astray. Your spiritual vulnerability. Are you still struggling with sin you should have overcome by now? You've been born again for a while. You've been tongues. I mean, you've been speaking in tongues for a very long time. But you are still trapped with some level of fleshly manifestation that embarrasses heaven. And let me tell you one thing. There are two amplifiers I know in life. One is money. The other is power. Whether positional power or spiritual power. And guess what? Anything they meet in a life, they amplify it. If originally you have the tendency to fornicate, when money comes into your life, you will have structures that can enable you to get proper, proper <laughs> without being caught. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You can afford to tell a girl, okay, go to Honolulu and wait for me. First class ticket, the best hotel. But there's money. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and so the love of God. God looks at you and he loves you. He doesn't want you to be destroyed. He will hold back the bread. Instead of me to lose him to the enemy because of my blessing, I would rather gauge what I give him so that he's not destroyed. How many mothers are in the house? Praise God. How many of you fed your children with feeding bottles. You made it milk. Can I see your hand? Oh, yes. yes, you did. You did baby friendly, but after some time, because you have to go to work. Okay. Do you know that no mother makes that thing? With, you know it's often made with hot water. No mother makes it and puts it in the mouth of the child straight. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What do you do? You test it on yourself. Why do you do that? Can he handle this? If you can handle it, say yes. You can handle it. That's when you put it in the mouth of the child. You don't make it and put it straight into the mouth of the child. And so when God has prepared your breakthrough, you need to test your ability to handle what he breakthrough. We test it on yourself. You see, by my assessment of this young man, this one can mislead, mislead him. He will put a little water to cool it in order for you to still remain in the house. Is somebody listening this morning? Yes. And so, how do you now assess quick acceleration? The easiest way to do it is to prepare yourself spiritually. Fast, study, pray, become temp, you know, become accommodating, display the features that will make heaven know this one is grown. Spiritually. And the more you now take root downwards, the more fruits you bring forth upwards. 
And so the problem with our delayed prayers is not with heaven. It's a function of our level of preparation. Are you prepared for the next level? We'll be closing very soon. But listen to me. There's physical preparation. There's professional preparation. There is physical preparation. There is marital preparation. As a person who have handled a lot of cases of marital challenges, I found out that most of the things pastor that suppress people, they are not fundamental. Excuse me. Ordinary the way you press the toothpaste <laughs> has brought serious crisis before in certain homes. Listen, the man says, this woman is so disorganized. He will just carry the toothpaste and press it at the center. <laughs> and I, I like order. I want to progressively push it. <laughs> and I can tell you where it is coming from. One grew up in a house that when the toothpaste you buy, you, they are bought in cartons. So you just use it to finish and throw it away. The other grew up in another house that when the tea is finished, you will take the tea, you will compress it, you will push it until the end. And when that is not enough, you take the scissors, you will do a surgery to make sure that you recover all. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together this morning? Yes. And I have found out that many of us, we want a man, we want a woman, they were very prepared. So, brothers, you say, I can't take this nonsense any longer. That nonsense is required to prepare you as a man. There are certain positions you do not have the temperament to handle if a woman have not trained you at home. <laughs> if you have not gone through the school of marriage and allowing the wisdom of God to guide you to be a success at home, you are likely to mess up in the office. Even when you operate within the real context of corporate America. There are certain things you will also walk out from say, I can't take it any longer. And you lose your blessing because you didn't have the temperament to handle anger. Is somebody here this morning? Yes. You know, in the home, I tell people, the beauty about marriage is that marriage is a processor. It will process you, it will refine you. It will cut out some things. You know what I mean? Some things that nobody can tell you outside, they will tell you inside. Including yours truly. I've heard some things I looked at you, yes, this is coming from a whole me. So what's the whole you? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is a preparation you need as a man to be able to manage a woman. Women are wonderful. They are wonderful. My wife woke me up one day and said, Honey, do you love me? And I wanted to be truthful. I looked at her and said, Honey, I have decided to love you. <laughs> Tell me about the grace of God yesterday. So, we're going to see. He said, I decided to love you. He said, What kind of answer is that? He said, Straight from the heart. He said, Why? 
I said, because I've discovered that he sometimes it becomes so hard to love you. He said, why? Because some of the things you do, sometimes you just excite me, some other time you don't do some things and begin to say, God, did I not pay well? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And I realize it is not by feeling, it is a question of decision and determination. And sometimes I met her also in her mood. What's the problem? Find Baba like me. <laughs> She's not too sure whether she made mistake too. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But guess what has kept it going? A commitment to heaven that this one must work. And guess what I've noticed? Our disagreements are becoming fewer. As we trust heaven that God will use each of us to sharpen our lives. <coughs> I've discovered that we have very few areas of disagreement. And so, beloved God, that husband that is being delayed is because they have not found enough comfort to believe that you are prepared, you have what it takes to handle them. I remember when I was preparing for marriage, I looked at myself, I told myself, I don't want a baby for a while. Why? I'm too busy. I come back, I meet somebody crying. I went to a single cell school, we are all boys in my family, I part from the last girl. Seven boys. So I've never been used to knowing how to pet a woman. So I said, I need them. Real sister. <laughs> Try to you down. Tied to or not tied to every woman is a woman. I have to learn by reason of this in the home. My brethren, you cannot be so fortunate. So what's my counsel? Prepare. Prepare for the next level as I close. Prepare for your next promotion. It's coming. But what's delaying it is that God has assessed it. That if it is delivered prematurely, it can hurt you. And God doesn't want you hurt. He loves you. Dig your ditches. As a church pastor, dig your ditches. Yes! Maybe about 200 people. But begin to see a church that should be able to handle 500. Amen. By the grace of God, we have a 2,000 you know, congregation member church. And we are trying to build an auditorium today. And they asked me, what do you want to do? I said, we are believing God. The architectural you know, details are out. I believe in God for a 4,000 seat auditorium. And I found out that it is the space you give to God that God feels. When you are prepared, the Lord will respond to your preparation. Amen. As we enter the month of September, as we walk towards the end of the year, begin to prepare for your next level. Amen. Shall I rise up to pray?